Mr Crispin here once again and in today's video we're going to finish off the cylinder covers with some PCD drilling and slot milling. So to kick off I'm going to uh, start with the PCD drilling and if you saw part 2 you'll have seen me machine these uh, covers. They go on one end of the cylinder block uh, so a PCD is required around here to hold it on. On the other end of the block uh, there is another cover and uh, here it is. I've machined these off camera just a flat cover and these are uh, locate in there uh, so another PCD is required a couple of things you might notice about this one is that the uh, OD is slightly inboard of the edge of the cylinder and there's a little tapped hole in the middle and that's because there's an aluminium cover that screws on the end of this um, to make it look nice so uh, that is why it's got those features both PCDs are the same 12 holes so there's the part, and uh, if you think back to uh, part two, I held um, these components through the middle with a uh, little bushing and a screw. Not so easy here, that's a blind hole, and uh, you may have noticed that when I made this fixture, I had already turned the back down uh, to half the thickness. I don't know if you can see that there, but there's a step there, and that was for this very purpose. What that allows me to do you get a little tool makers clamp in, um, one on each side, and I'll be able to clamp the component down to the fixture while I drill the holes. So the clamps are in position, and uh, in part two I found the centre of the fixture, and uh, that is where I am now. If we look up at the digital readout, you can see 0, 0 for X and Y, so I know that the centre drill is right above the middle. For drilling this PCD I'm going to be drilling at the 12 o'clock position and uh, the radius of this PCD is 1 inch and 15 thou. So if we come back to the digital readout I will now dial in OK, well, 1 inch and 15 thou roughly. Well, here we have a standard 12 hole PCD 360 divided by 12 gives 12 equal spacings of 30 degrees so between each hole we have 30 degrees however that doesn't give me room for the steam port however I uh, arrange it I'll be cutting into it uh, one way or another so I've had to alter the spacing and here is what that will look like instead of 30 degrees all the way around I've got 25, 40, 25 so I've just moved these 5 degrees in either direction. That's the spacing. Now how am I going to drill these? Well, uh, I've got to pick a starting point, And uh, what I've picked is this hole here. So that is going to be 0. And uh, what that allows me to do is add up. So I'm going to start 0, 25, 65, 90. Then we're back to the standard spacing. 120, 150, 180 and so on. A couple of things to mention about the drilling. One is uh, the centre drill I'm using is actually the right diameter for the uh, clearance hole so the bolts go straight in. Second is that I'm drilling deep enough to actually uh, deburr the hole and drill it in one go and I'll show a close up of that shortly but I'm actually drilling in just into the cone so it uh, breaks the edge uh, as well. Now I can adjust the clamps, I can get to this hole over here and I can get to the two offset holes over here. So with the clamps reset I've returned to zero, to the datum hole. And now instead of going around 30 degrees I'm going to go around 25. Okay. Now, instead of going to the next hole position, I'm going to overshoot by 5 degrees. Now, 
Okay, so that's that one done. So hopefully if I get that in you might be able to see the brake edges. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. But uh, there's one, there's the offset holes. And uh, that is the uh, purpose of the offset holes. You can see that it's going to clear the steam port. Now on to the uh, second set of covers. An identical hole pattern, um, slightly complicated by the fact that this time the hole pattern's got to be aligned with this uh, shape. And what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and drill this one, uh, 12 holes, and then I will uh, take it off the fixture, uh, show you how it aligns with this shape, and then I'll show you how I uh, set it up to uh, hopefully bring the hole pattern out in the right place. We're starting uh, with the dividing head set at zero as before. So uh, there's a the hole pattern and let's have a look at what's going on here. So here's the cylinder block, uh, you saw earlier I uh, had to come up with a hole spacing to miss the uh, steam port. Same again with uh, this one, however this time I already had this boss and uh, so I've had to do the drilling uh, in the correct relationship to this boss. And when I put this on here, the uh, flat surface on top has to be at 90 degrees to this face and I've had to do the drilling so that when that is at 90 degrees the uh, hole spacing is correct to miss the steam port so uh, here is how I worked out how to do that. When I say alignment what I really mean is where is the boss in relation to the component because uh, currently I could put this component in any position into the fixture and the dividing head could be at any number so we need to fix both of those. Uh, first up I'm going to forget about the component I think about the hole pattern and um, I'm going to draw this steam port in. We know that there's going to be a steam port running uh, hopefully through here and uh, what I'm going to do is draw in the centre line which runs through the middle of the uh, circle and up. Not a great steam port. Okay, so uh, that's where it's going to be. And if we think back now to the uh, component and where the boss is going to be um, you may remember from machining cylinders part 6 that the port runs at 12 degrees to uh, the vertical. So uh, I basically need to achieve something like this. And I've drawn this uh, centre line on because uh, this is actually the point I'm going to be working to. That is the point where the centre line of the slot intersects the pitch circle diameter. So if we work back we've now halved that uh, 40 degree gap so we've got 20 and then back to zero was 25, so 45 degrees between uh, the starting position and the centre line of the slot. So I basically have to find a way to uh, set this face 12 degrees off square to the uh, slot angle. So you can ask two questions. How am I going to uh, align the component? And where am I going to position the dividing head? Well, how am I going to align the component? I'm going to use a dial indicator and clock across this face and keep adjusting the component until I get zero, 00. When I get zero, 00, I know that the component is in line with the uh, machine and uh, that gives me a reference. Once I've set that, I can then work back to where's the starting hole going to be. Because if I can get the relationship between the starting hole and the uh, face correct, then all these other holes and ultimately the uh, spacing is going to be correct. So uh, let's uh, consider a few options. I could clock this to zero, zero uh, and just start at zero. 
Well, that's going to put this hole right in line, and uh, that would put the steam port round here, so we know that's wrong. I could come all the way round to 45 degrees, and that would put the centre of the slot in line with the middle. Again, that's wrong. We want it to be 12 degrees off. 12 degrees off the square. What we have to do is come back 12 degrees. 12 degrees off square. And in other words, 45 minus 12. So that was 33 degrees, and uh, now I'll show you the practical demonstration, and uh, it may start to make sense. Now let's actually do it in practice. So the dividing head is currently at zero. I'm going to bring it round to uh, 33 degrees. And I'm going to install the component. And to get it somewhere near, I'm just going to hold a ruler across here and line it up by eye with the bed. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Just snug that and then bring an indicator in. And uh, I know you can't see that, but all I'm going to do then is um, wind the indicator back and forth along this surface and just adjust it till I get it set to zero. From there, assuming I had uh, locked the cap head up, I'd return to zero, put my first hole in, around 25 degrees, 40 degrees, 25 degrees, then 30, 30, 30, uh, until I get back to zero. So that was the method for doing those holes. Okay, so the last job to do today is to mill a slot in uh, these bosses on all four covers and uh, that's just to allow the steam to come out here because currently where the boss goes in it blocks off part of the hole. And uh, this is the kind of slot I'm talking about. So uh, I will show you how I've uh, set up to do these. So I'm going to do uh, one on camera. Here you can see a magnetic V-block which I have stuck to the bed and I've done two things with it. One uh, was to indicate across here and here and get the V-block parallel or in line with the X-axis so I can use these two faces as a reference. Second was I used an edge finder to find the uh, centre line of the V. This way on. And I zeroed the digital readout. For the final step, I want a simple uh, fixturing and setup method that I can use for all four components and uh, will set the alignment easily. I'm going to more or less forget about this boss because only two of the components have it and it's on the back side, so uh, let's forget about that. All I actually need is this hole pattern. The uh, holes are all symmetrical to uh, this centre line, and what I can do is draw uh, theoretical lines across. And if I do that, then I actually get 90 degrees here and 90 degrees here. In other words, if I join these holes up, I get a perpendicular line to uh, what I want to machine along. And uh, that applies to uh, any of these hole sets. So let me show you uh, how I'm going to use them. So looking at the component, as I described earlier, we can use the line between these two holes to uh, give us a perpendicular reference. Uh, and in fact any of these sets of holes would do and uh, what I've done is taken a couple of bits of brass and turned some pins that fit in the holes two pins now from here uh, I reckon you could do three things one is you could use an indicator to get these two pins level um, and just keep adjusting it till you got the same reading on this pin as this pin uh, you could do some maths and work out a size from here to here and use a set of slip gauges and then uh, turn the component into the slip gauges every time. What I'm actually going to do is line it up as good as I can by eye first and then get an adjustable parallel. And uh, for anyone that's not seen these, it's a uh, sliding parallel uh, made of two pieces that uh, changes in width but maintains parallelism and uh, here's how I'm going to use it I know this is a reference surface I'm going to lower this down all the way and then just push and it's aligned the component for me make sure that's all pressed down okay back it off and uh, remove it
and that, uh, I'll just do a quick visual check, has aligned the uh, component. All I have to do now is drop a uh, screw in to the awaiting T-nut. Lock it up with an Allen key and remove the pins and it's time to mill and all I'm going to do is come down with the cutter steer clear of this surface by a couple of thou and just machine a slot in uh, I'll do that off camera well that completes uh, machining cylinder covers I've uh, enjoyed uh, doing this there's been some interesting turning and milling uh, I also hope you've enjoyed watching this little series and see you on the next video